Around a year ago, I made a video on ironing in Kira where I went over what ironing was, when you may want to use it, what the various settings meant and how to use those settings. And we did some printing where I showed you the results of ironing. And for those of you that maybe didn't see that video, don't know what ironing is, or just need a brief refresher, essentially with ironing enabled, the printer will deposit trace amounts of filament on your top layer. This again has to be a flat top layer and the hot nozzle will go back and forth over your print, quite literally ironing out the layer lines on the top part of your print. And the results of that were pretty insane. And in some instances, we were able to completely remove the layer lines on the top of our part. If you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend checking it out because we're sort of going to be expanding off of that with some of the things we discussed in this video. So I will place links down below in the description over to that initial ironing video. With the recent release of Cura 4.11, they released a new feature called monotonic ordering. And the general idea for it is, is that when enabled, the hot end will go and fill in your top layer from one corner going back and forth all the way to the other corner. While the traditional way is similar where it would go back and forth from one corner, but based off of convenience and its travel path, it will leave gaps very often and have to jump back over and fill in those gaps, which can sometimes lead to imperfections. And so the idea behind going from one end to the other is that you should in theory get much cleaner top layers or at least cleaner top layers and they released it in two versions they have it as a standalone monotonic orders option as well as a ironing option and I spent the past week doing quite a bit of testing on various prints to see what the results were like and I took some comparison photos of with and without for both the standalone and the ironing option. So in today's video, we're going to go over how to set this up in Cura and I will show you all of the different settings I tested out and what the results I got were like so that way you can decide for yourself whether this is something that you want to test out or maybe add to your arsenal of slicing tips and tricks. So there is quite a bit to cover and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. I think it's going to be easiest for us to hop right into Cura so that we can get it all set up and I can show you some of the different tool paths. So let's go ahead and do that. Since this is a brand new feature of Cura 4.11, you will need to make sure that you have Cura 4.11 installed. If you don't, just go ahead and update your version of Cura before going ahead and following along. Once you've confirmed that, we are going to head over to the right side in the print settings menu, and we will click on the hamburger menu followed by manage setting visibility. This will pop up the window and in the filter box, just go ahead and search monotonic. We're going to need to enable the monotonic top and bottom order as well as the monotonic ironing order. We will need ironing enabled as well, be, at least for what we're gonna be showing off in this video. So if you don't have ironing enabled, just search ironing and make sure that the checkbox for enable ironing has also been checked. And once you've got all that confirmed, you can go ahead and close out of the window. And when you go over to the print settings window now, you will see the monotonic top and bottom order with a checkbox. And if you click on the enable ironing box, you will also have access to that new monotonic ironing uh, order option. Just like with regular ironing, the monotonic ironing as well as the monotonic top and bottom is going to benefit parts with a flat top surface. If you have a part that has more of a rounded or sloped geometry, you're really not going to see the effects. I'm currently printing out a utility belt mod for the Voron 0.1. This is something that's been worked on and recommended to me by my buddy Thiago. And most of the parts, especially the panels that make up the majority of it, have a lot of flat area. So I figured it'd be a perfect candidate for testing out these monotonic settings. Before printing this out, I wanted to show you the toolpath for it, regularly sliced and with the monotonic top and bottom order. So first here, I'm just gonna slice it up regularly. And if I take you guys to this top surface area and you see the nozzle going back and forth, this is how it would regularly slice it. You'll see this center area where it just completely misses it. It finishes the bottom right portion, then it hops back over and fills that section in. And then it leaves another gap goes ahead and fills in everything else before jumping back and filling in that gap. And keep try to keep in your memory where these two gaps are because in a bit here when we print this part out, you'll visually be able to see those gaps where the nozzle came back. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just slice it again with the exact same settings, but with the monotonic top and bottom order. And as you can see, it goes back and forth and the difference is it starts from one end and it makes sure that when it hits the other end, every single thing is filled in. So it bounces from the top now back to the middle, then it goes to the bottom. And so everything keeps in alignment in a kind of a 
step direction from one end to the other and not having to have the nozzle jump around and then fill in a certain section again should give us better quality and better looking surfaces. All right, now that we've seen the toolpaths, I went ahead and sliced up this file and printed it out twice. The first time I ran it just regular, kind of how I showed, and the second time with the monotonic top and bottom order, I printed both of them. Again, everything else was the exact same, so five walls, five top and bottom layers, 20% infill, and the temps were the same. This was ABS printed pretty damn high, uh, because again, this was for the Voron build, and uh, I got a bit of video footage for you to see them kind of side by side, and then I got a lot of still photos because it seemed much easier to capture the detail or the differences between the two. But the first one here is the regular version, and then this is going to be the one with the monotonic enabled. And as you can see, those lines on the top there, they are very consistent all the way across. And if I put them side by side, the one on the left side, which is regular, if you remember where that gap was that it had to jump over, there is very clear lines of extra extrusion or inconsistent extrusion in that area. And I think that these photos do a really good job of showing the difference again between the regular RAN file if I had just printed this without the setting enabled versus again with the monotonic enabled. So it's not something I ever would have thought of until I had seen this and now compared them. And now of course I can't <laughs> unsee it and I want all my prints to look like the monotonic one and not the regular version. I did go ahead and also re-slice this file up uh, with the exact same thing, one on, one off, but I did two walls instead of five just to give it a bit more surface area and I wanted to see, you know, if there was much difference, but it really looked the exact same as the version with five walls. And again, the monotonic version looked quite a bit better and the regular version did have that extra bit of filament deposited where it had to jump back over. And so once I was done with this, I then printed out these exact same files, but this time I went ahead and had ironing enabled because ironing would make a much more drastic difference. So I printed it with ironing, just kind of your standard ironing, and then I printed it with the monotonic top and bottom order, as well as the monotonic ironing order. And the differences between these were substantial. The regular ironing had a pretty big gash on the top of the part, while the monotonic ironing had a very, very fine line that you could hardly even see. And if we get down to the lower section, there was quite a few sections where when the nozzle had to jump back over and it was doing the ironing, it left some pretty nasty gashes and, and just indents in the part while the monotonic one looks way better. So um, again, I could see the difference with without ironing and just kind of running it as is. But man, if you are going to be doing ironing, the difference between the standard ironing and the monotonic ironing to me is night and day. Um, I really wasn't expecting it to be that much of a difference. And again, it, it I think the pictures show it, it's a quite substantial difference between the two. I did end up trying out another part that I felt was a bit more complex. It had a couple of different top section layers. There was also quite a few holes through the part just to see what it was like. And I didn't actually notice any difference between the regular or the monotonic uh, enabled. Again, this is without ironing. And I think part of that is just because of how small this piece is and how narrow the tool paths are. I did also try it with regular ironing and the monotonic ironing. And that I definitely noticed a much bigger difference because the regular ironing, again, Again, had a bunch of different gashes through it while the monotonic ironing did have some gashes through it but not nearly uh, as much and again just like regular ironing like we discussed in that video specifically the ironing function is not something you'd use for all parts and all geometries but it is something very cool to have for those times you want a very very smooth top uh, surface to your part. I've been very pleased with the new monotonic ordering and I think that this is going to be something that I'm probably going to be enabling by default in many of my profiles. And the reason for that is that the trade-off seems minimal. In my testing, the increase of time for having this feature enabled is minimal. I mean, it's hardly even noticeable whether you do it via the normal way or if you're planning on ironing and using the monotonic ironing, it just increases it by a very marginal amount. And yes, in some instances on some prints, it doesn't seem to really have much of an effect on the finished parts look. But for the times that it does, I think that it again is something that's just worth having enabled or at least considering enabling it again most of us, even if we were printing out parts that are functional, would prefer to have a better looking part. And this just seems like a really easy way to get, again, a smoother top surface to our parts. So 
That has been monotonic ordering. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and have a much better understanding of how it works and whether it's something that you're interested in trying out. Let me know in the comments down below if you do get a chance to test this out, what your thoughts are like. And if you have any questions, of course, about anything that I discussed, let me know in the comments down below as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel, furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description over to my Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of my existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content like this for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.